I'm reading today an extract from a forthcoming book, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, the Holy Trinity in Astrology, which I'm co-writing with Julia Sophia. Uranus Square Moon. Squaring the moon by transit, Uranus sparks an inner unsettledness and emotional restlessness that may translate into abrupt outbursts or hasty emotional decisions. I'm going to go through this bit by bit. We're looking not for the effect of a transit in this study as the primary explanation. That's the secondary explanation. And most astrology cookbooks give you that. Very useful. Great place to start astrology. However, when you delve deeply into it and you, you notice the same transit creating different effects in different people, then you're interested in what binds that series of behaviours into a commonality. So we're looking at that. And the commonality here is that Uranus is sparky and it's, it makes you feel restless. And because it's the moon, that's a very deep emotional restlessness. And, and, and what do you do with that? Well, you, you create bursts, outbursts. And, and that can be negative. So you can, you can get angry with somebody because they haven't tied their shoelace or because they turned left instead of right or something on the face of it trivial. You know, you, you've got this restlessness that's so easily triggered into outbursts that you're, you know, um, you're going to be behaving in a strange way, according to some people. And this may translate into emotional decisions as well. Many of our decisions really are not rational in the first place, but in a Uranus moon transit by square, you're going to get this happening more. Relationship instabilities or unwelcome changes in the home life may feature, of course, compelling us to radically reconsider what constitutes our emotional safe haven. Now, this gives us a clue that we are feeling unsettled and restless is a result. What's the inner cause? And the moon's function is to locate for us a safe haven and to deepen our familiarity with it, our openness on the emotional level to the circumstances of this place or these people or this way of being. Some attitudes of life just don't make us feel safe and others do. Well, not many others do that. Usually we settle. Most people have actually looked for emotional safe haven in a partnership or in a position in life. And it's not quite what they want. They'll pretend it is at the beginning, especially in the Cupid phase or the honeymoon period of a relationship. This is Mr. Right. This is exactly the woman I want. You know, it's not. No, nobody can do that. Not really. There's no such thing as soulmates, not on that level. But some people find exactly the right partner. But most people create exactly the right partnership by making some level of adjustment, compromise. And that, that sounds all right. That sounds like a reasonable thing to do. But I, I don't get that at all. I don't think that we should compromise personally. I think there is a right place to be and it might change. It might be different next year. And, and there are inconveniences around that. And when you've actually got children to take care of, then those adjustments need to be made in order to make it all work and to be fair. However, the inner sense you have of what you need that's not going to be compromised, even if you want to, even if you're willing to compromise it, it won't. And Uranus is the agency through which you understand that you've compromised yourself 
too much. And it may take a, a little adjustment. Like you, you, might, you might all of a sudden do something crazy once in a while, and that's enough. You can blow off steam, and then you're very happy with your life. And I, I, I met a man, he, he's got kids, kept with his wife for 40 years, and, and so on. He's actually done the right thing, built a nice house for himself. He's done what society wants and what his family needs. He's done it properly. However, I was with him during the time when he was settling into that. And he had affairs, he left work for a year and did nothing, and he behaved like a teenager when he was a married man with a, a couple of kids. He just got it out of his system. He was going through a, moot, um, a, a Uranus moon transit. Apprehensive, yet highly sensitive, we become impatient with relationships that were previously tension-laden, ill-matched, perceived as restrictive or smothering, a sense of personal uniqueness or originality, potentially ending up even long-standing commitments brusquely. What was working, what has been working absolutely satisfactory for a period of time, can very suddenly, overnight, literally, in, in, in a moment, in a comment, can end with this kind of transit. There's no warning with Uranus. And the feelings that you've got, the, these moon feelings, which really come from very early childhood, your need for nurture, for safety, to be fed, to be taken care of. You have that need when you're a baby. Well, that need is answered by someone because of a loving connection between you a mutuality of love. And it's not only the mother that radiates that love to the baby. The baby's power, which is unrivaled on the planet, is created by loving the source of its food, like a dog. And I know how controversial that might sound, but think about it. First survive, then worry about the, the subtleties of life. Now, this can suddenly change during a Uranus square moon transit. These spur-of-the-moment decisions to break loose from the shackles of constraint likely feel like a liberating release, yet produce long-term consequences. These decisions that take no time at all, they're momentary, like a lightning flash, Uranus. They have consequences in the long term. A Uranus transit is not a temporary phenomenon. It happens so fast that the energy of it may feel very short-lived. Not necessarily true, it could span the duration of the transit, but the intensity of Uranus and its impact very often short-lived. However, the consequences are not. The consequences inevitably lead you to validate, value, freedom, much more highly than you previously did. And that becomes a way of life then. Notwithstanding that it was an immediate spur-of-the-moment decision that took no planning or thought, nevertheless, you're on a new track. And that new track is a greater expression of freedom of the soul self. Alternative, alternatively, we reach emotional maturity through connecting with our feelings in entirely new ways, discovering our ability for detachment and tolerance, and our compelling need for personal space. Now we get to the wisdom. This rather erratic, zigzagging kind of sense of what our emotional body is doing is, is just looking for the door out of this prison it feels itself to be in. Where's the... Where's the open window. Where can I fly to? That's what Uranus is looking for. And to try to do that out there, in the world, in your relationships, before you've managed to understand it internally, that seems destined to fail or to create upset. What we need to do is to find the inner condition of the moon's freedom and Uranus is going to want to do that. It's going to square the moon 
in the strands it's that we're talking about. So that means it's going to do that whether you like it or not, which is Uranus's way of being anyway, as is true of all the outer planets. And so we have this sense of having to do something that on the one level we don't want to do, but on the other level, really, we do. You know, we've got this secret urge to do something that we don't always acknowledge. And Uranus is just saying, well, you know, that's true, do it. Um, so during this kind of transit, you're going to do things to break your habits of downsizing your security needs to fit this situation. Whereas, in fact, you, you need to feel free in your moon. The moon that feels imprisoned doesn't feel secure. The moon that feels free does. But that freedom, controversially, comes from a detachment. That's the source of your freedom. You just don't care what that person does and what happens to you in life. Whether that person is your partner and whether what happens to you in life robs you of all your money and all, everything else, it just doesn't matter. That's the high spiritual station of detachment which is taught in Buddhism and Sufism and any mystical philosophy at all. You have to be free of the need for things out there, including relationships, if you want to feel really free. <laughs>